Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery of the so-called improbable planet. A planet that is there but kind of should not be there. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now before we talk about the discovery, I need to give you a bit of a background on what exactly is happening and why this is an improbable planet. A few years ago we discovered two different exoplanets around two different stars. One is right here. This is a planet that's around five masses of Jupiter and is orbiting at a distance relatively close to its star, very similar to where Venus is from our own Sun. And the second giant planet is right here, a little bit less massive at around 2.3 masses of Jupiter, orbiting around its star um, at the same distance as Earth is. Now, overall it doesn't really seem weird yet, but the thing is, these two planets should not really exist. And the main reason why neither of these planets should technically exist is because their stars are what's known as evolved stars. They are basically stars that used to be similar to our sun, then eventually expanded, turning into ridiculously large red giant stars, and eventually lost their outer shells and became what they are right now. Now, um, for example, for our sun, this is the currently predicted size of the sun as a red giant. It's going to reach to the point where it's almost going to be touching the orbit of where planet Earth is and will very likely engulf and swallow our planet. And I actually made a video simulating all of this uh, a couple of years ago, but I also decided to briefly recreate this simulation right here using Space Engine and as you can see in uh, approximately 4 to 5 billion years from now, the surface of our planet will become extremely extremely hot and eventually it will very likely um, engulf our planet and our planet will no longer exist. In other words, the red giant sun is probably going to destroy Venus, Mercury and very likely Earth as well. Mars still has a chance to survive because it's a little bit farther away, but even with Mars we're still not entirely sure. And following this stage, the star will actually release all of its outer shell, creating a beautiful nebula. And here's an example of one such nebula that's currently happening around a star known as Mira A. So these are events we've observed around the galaxy and we have a pretty solid understanding and quite a lot of proof out there to suggest that this is exactly what's going to happen to our sun. And it's at the same time something that we expect to have happened to the two stars I just mentioned that this particular study discusses in a little bit more detail. Now first of all, uh, in this study they mentioned the term astroseismology and this is something I'm going to be mentioning in more detail tomorrow because I thought it would be better to create a separate video about this. It's a very interesting astronomical idea so do come back tomorrow and also don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to get notified about similar astronomical ideas. But going back to this particular planet and this particular star, what exactly is so improbable about it? Why shouldn't those two planets exist to begin with? Well. The way we believe the sun will progress through its evolution is that it's going to start growing larger and larger in size, eventually reaching um, large enough size to basically swallow the planets. And at some point, as you can see, somewhere around this size, this is when it's going to probably stop. But it will also start throwing out a lot of material that will very likely hit other planets and uh, those planets might slow down as a result and thus fall into the sun as well. So, in some sense, we don't expect a lot of planets to survive this red giant stage. So, even though Mars does have a bit of a chance to survive simply um, based on the distance in the beginning, it will very likely um, eventually fall into the large red giant sun as well. And something similar might also happen to other planets, including maybe Jupiter. Although here things get really interesting. And this is where this paper uh, may have actually discovered something really unusual. So having analyzed various giants around these evolved stars, basically stars after their red giant stage, the scientists realized that um, out of about 50 or so giants, many of them in the evolved stars were a lot more massive than they should be. In other words, even though let's say in our solar system the gas giant here is one mass of Jupiter, for the planets that were investigated including some of the other giants, 
their mass was always a lot more massive than other similar giants discovered. So, in other words, in every evolved star that used to be a red giant and now is no longer a red giant but still has a planet, not only did those planets survive, some of them were way more massive than they should be. So, what exactly is going on? And this is where the scientists behind this study decided to analyze this in a little bit more detail and discovered that, well, it kind of makes sense that for all of the stars and for all of the planets around those stars, the planets and stars don't just uh, get created and get destroyed, they evolve together. So in other words, as the star evolves and grows in size, so do some planets orbiting those stars as well. But this doesn't really explain yet how a large massive planet similar to uh, Jupiter but about five and a half times more massive ended up orbiting so close to its parent star. And more specifically at a distance of roughly around 60% the distance of Earth to the Sun. So basically the distance of Venus to the Sun. This of course creates a bit of a problem because um, at some point that star was engulfing that area. And how did this planet get there? Well, the explanation involves two things. One is that, obviously, as the star evolves, it starts throwing away a lot of the material, a lot of which will eventually end up as a nebula, while at the same time, some of this material might end up on the giant planets that already exist in the star system. In other words, if we were to go back to our own solar system, when the sun is in its red giant stage and it's going to start throwing out tremendous amounts of matter, even though some of this matter will eventually make Jupiter lose a bit of its orbit and come closer and closer to the star, a lot of this matter as it gets absorbed by Jupiter will actually make it grow in size and become more massive. Now, we don't really know how much more massive, but judging by all of these planets we've discovered so far, it seems that even a smaller star will eventually produce a really, really massive Jupiter-like planet. And for all we know, even planets like Mars might end up eventually becoming some sort of um, gas giant, or at least an object relatively similar in mass to Neptune. In other words, it might actually absorb enough mass to become some sort of a strange gas giant-like object possibly similar to Neptune and Uranus. Now, all of this is, of course, a bit of a speculation, but judging by the observations from other evolved stars and the existence of these improbable planets that shouldn't really exist there, we now can definitely say that many of the planets in our solar system will very likely survive the red giant stage of the Sun, but as a result of this survival, they'll probably transform and become a lot more massive and possibly move a lot closer to the star itself. Now, unfortunately, we don't really have any simulations just yet, and I think you would need a really powerful supercomputer to try to simulate all of this. But for all we know, the uh, Mars right here could eventually absorb enough mass from our sun and acquire enough materials to start producing water again and possibly even become habitable again. Now, this is a huge speculation, definitely something we need to investigate, but the possibility is definitely there. So, the future of our sun as a red giant is definitely not the end of our solar system. For all we know, it could actually be the so-called second stage of habitability of our solar system. And so, assuming that life is still around and assuming that something intelligent is going on in our solar system, maybe this will be our new home eventually because the chances for our planet Earth, unfortunately, are not really that high. But anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. The discovery of the so-called improbable planet is definitely something we need to take a look at a little bit more and to analyze in more detail, because right now, the future of our own solar system is still not really that well understood. Until we discover more, that's it. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.